Mike, how long have you prepared for this grand final, this premiership on Saturday? Well, we started back in January for this. Uh, we've been working hard all the year. We set ourselves to win the early ones to get ourselves into a good position. We could then sit back six weeks ago knowing we were either first or second and work then for the grand final. This we have done. Well, I suppose uh, we've been pretty successful, Murray, over time, and generally we start right at the beginning of the season with the idea of getting into a grand final. And uh, we've got to work along match by match. We've been, uh, you know, undermanned, you'd say, as far as players during the year, and we've had to fight out every match with the idea that once we hit the major round, then we'll put in the extra preparations, and we've been working on the psychological side of uh, football, I think, in, in getting them really to the, the point that they are now. This is Adelaide, city of churches and parks, and there's fever pitch excitement for the grand final of the South Australia. We've seen coaches Big Mike Patterson, North Adelaide, and Nuggety Boss Williams of Port Adelaide, and each is forecasting a win for his side. This is the second successive year the two teams have clashed in the grand final. There's a capacity crowd of 56,000 at the Adelaide Cricket Ground, nestled in gardens acknowledged as amongst the most beautiful in the world. The ball is bounced and the big men fly into action. North straight into attack. A poorly directed kick is easily marked by Beswick on a half forward flank. Mistakes are likely in the opening minutes of the settling down period. And up go the big men. Merritt in the front position for Port. They spoil each other. The ball beating Nyland as it rolls out of bounds. Ross Williams feeling the build up of pressure. North's teamwork and precision passing are a threat to Port. They've outmaneuvered the defence and boot the first goal of the match. And look at those Rooster supporters preening their feathers. Port strike back in typically aggressive fashion. The ball lands on its end, bouncing away from Mildy. The Tigerish Cunningham recovers possession for the Magpies. Spry grabs him. The Tiny Rovers paid a free. He was held while not in possession. The long and short of it, six foot six Mildy and five foot seven Cunningham, tallest and shortest players on the field. Thoroughly reliable in all aspects of play, Cunningham has 38 goals to his credit this season. He dispatches the ball through the centre of the big sticks for another. The Magpies opening goal in the big one after three minutes. Merritt goes in to win the hit out for Port. North gains possession to get the ball away from centre. Sash is there being shadowed by Knapp. Sash pivots, punching the ball through for a behind. Enterprising play. The beaver-like Grimwood dashes through three defenders. Handballs to Maynard. He loses the ball, trying to sidestep Javorski. Spawn can't pick it up. Umpire Ducker rules ball up. He's officiating in his fourth grand final, his third in succession. Handball to Stringer. He balks light to send North forward. Talented Russell Ebert, tackled by Rebeck. Beswick struck on the jaw and in the back as Webb tears in after the ball. Beswick has paid a free. He's pretty groggy and sore, but able to take the kick. Gerlach and Spry spoil each other. Hammond gathering up the crumbs. Grimwood pushes him off balance and Gerlach snatches at the ball. Neither side has yet settled down properly. There's a fair amount of scrambling play. Howard for North. <laughs> Mildy and Spry spoil each other. Cunningham's reading the game well, tackled by Hammond just outside the goal square. Your two Ruckman and Spawn and Spry, how do you think they'll combat the two giants of Port Adelaide in Marriott and Mildy? Well, Murray, the first thing to do is to beat them to the ball. To be first to the ball all day, to get the hand to it, to give the opportunity to our teammates around the ground. Spry's free kick is taken by Light on the flank. Out sprinting Von Berto and Plummer, he passes for Mildy. Spry is there as the last line of defence. Darting across, Grimwood pivots on the run. A magnificent goal.
Strang for North. Ports first to the ball, a lost opportunity. Grand final tension is still affecting most players, and there's plenty of bad handling. Grimwood again. He kicks off the ground, soccers it through. Your two big chaps in Mildy and Marriott, they've got a big job against Spawn and Spry. How do you think they'll fare? Well, I think that in our second semi-final, we were a bit undermanned or as far as underreached in the second string of our ruck. I think the inclusion of Leon Mildy totally fit this time. I think that uh, we'll do better, and we've got to do better, because I think this is where North got on top of us in the second semi-final. A poor kick by the normally accurate Merritt. Only gains a point. Looked a certain goal, that one. Grimwood's producing one of his best efforts. A perfectly placed kick to the goal square. Port are unable to capitalise. They can't afford to lose too many chances like that. Javorski clears for North. Strang fumbles as Light closes in. Cunningham, he's everywhere. Same as in the preliminary final. Spry takes a saving mark. His kick taken by Stringer. Down the ground goes North. Rodney Rubrand Marsh. He plays on for Sash, but Nat doing well has him under control. Clayton for Port. Hammond's coming more into the game now. There's genuine body contact in the tackles. Jaborski to Von Berto. An error of judgment by Stix Phillips, and Woit sends Port Goldwards. Ball's desperately punched away by Spry, and Paul takes North out of immediate danger. An anxious Mike Patterson, as Port looked like adding to their score. Mildy is spoiled by Spry in the goal square. The ball chased by Howard out of bounds. Port has a nine-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Okay, Tremendous competitors, Port respond to Williams' challenge. They're having a hard time, though, matching North speed. And they're not in full control of the ball. Grimwood is trying his heart out, and Marsh is putting in a good one for the Roosters. Up goes Matt and Rodney Roblin. Monberto gathers from the pack. He's doing some constructive work. Hand pass to Hurl. A heavy tackle by Woit. A great value player, this boy. He's held by the ankle by Hurl and is paid a free. Port seem much steadier now. Phillips wins the mark from Grimwood. His first goal, just two points the difference. Darrell Kale, younger brother of John, Port's captain, who's still on the bench. John's not played for six weeks due to abdominal strain, but will come on if needed. He's an inspiring player. Grimwood. A hand pass, but North has the front position and turn the attack. They're backing up well. Plummer passes for Hurl. Plummer spoiled by Clayton. Clayton's well tackled by Hurl, with Kale slow in giving support. Revick to Rodney Roblin. It's not a good kick at all. Sash was waiting close to the goal square. Out of bounds on the full. Baker can't handle the ball. Paul loses it in Grimwood's tackle. Howard grabs it. The bustling magpie tactics are disturbing the flow of North's play. And here they come in full cry. A strong mark by the determined Merritt should improve on his last effort. He's right on time at this time. Court lead by eight points. Matt, it's only his fourth league game of the season to the Eagle Light. Solid defensive work by Phillips. Monberto hand passes to Plummer. James goes in after the ball. Cleaver passes to Spry. Oh, a bad kick, easily intercepted. A gift for Port. They're on top in this quarter, but there's a long way to go.
From the throw-in, the bounce beats Howard and Paul breaks away for North. Sash knocks it down to the ground. It's recovered by Woit. He passes to Nyland, but Bonberto is there with an effective tackle. Good football. Kale to Nyland. And your star player in Barry Robberan, what type of game you're looking for him to stay at home in the centre? No, once again, the attacking role. I believe that, uh, well, the side that kicks the most number of goals wins. We'll be setting up scoring opportunities for our forwards further down. Rebex tackled by Ebert. Bonberto tackles Kale, but he's pushed in the back and is paid a free. Kale's pass to the flank is well directed, but North are first to the ball. And it's a goal. There's an abundance of pace and power in the game. It was expected to be this way, and no one's disappointed. Rebeck and Kale fight for the ball. Baker joins in, and Barry Robran. Woit down the flank. Grimwood paid a free over Von Berto. Gerlach wins the mark from Javorski, just outside the goal square. And there's half-time. Port has an eight-point lead. Mike Patterson had hoped it would be that margin in North's favour. Boss Williams has reasons to be pleased, but he's too experienced to allow any complacency. Well, I'd like to be controlling the ball at the same time. This is the most important thing. And you come in at half-time with the idea that you're still controlling the ball as a team. Uh, and you've got a lot of confidence when you go out after that. To be in front and not controlling the ball, you're, you're pretty worried. So I think the main point is that we're controlling the ball, especially from the rucks. I'd like to be three or four in front, Murray, because I believe that uh, this is their third game in three weeks, third hard game. If we can get in front or be in front by half-time, we'll apply pressure once again, get out there, hit them hard, tackle hard, and I think their fitness, as compared to our fitness, will take over in the last quarter. But I'd estimate that we could get a three-goal advantage in the third and then be eight up by final time. Port on attack in the third quarter. They've got the win with them too, but North's positional play and slick passing gets them out of trouble. The ball beating Dennis Kale and Rebeck over the boundary line. Bonberto passes to Rodney Robran. Sorrell's there in defence. Darrell Kale taking an opportunist pass. Knight takes a strong mark from Spawn and Phillips close to the centre circle. Grimwood gathers off the pack and he's running free. Outpacing Howard, he sparks off an attack. Baker goes headlong into Webb and Strang recovers the ball. His pass is knocked down by Grimwood. James fumbles, the ball's out of Barry Robran's reach. Monberto gathers, passes for Rodney Robran. He's beaten for the mark by the brilliant Ebert. Ebert's been switched to Barry Robran in the hope he'll hold the champion in check. Their battle should be a highlight from here on. Up goes Barry Robran, Spawn and Cunningham. North are becoming more positive in their approach, but Port will make them fight for every point. They're lacking the cohesion of the first two quarters, though. But the fire is still there. Rebeck harassed by Beswick and Dennis Kale, and the ball goes out of bounds. <laughs> Stout-hearted Cunningham passes for Maynard. A real chance for Port to score a major here. Maynard's come good at the right time. Couldn't find his best form earlier in the season. Never gave up trying and his determination is being rewarded. It's a goal. Port seven. Again, they have an eight-point lead. Port lifting their game. This is the football the crowd came to see. Barry Robran in front. Gerlach and Howard go up for the mark. One by Gerlach. He's going like a rocket. He's made a terrific comeback after a bad injury. He passes for light, but Paul from the back takes the mark. Back come North. Barry Robran marks in front of Davies. Are you happy with your star player, Russell Ebert, playing at centre-half back? Well, I think if we had five Russells, I'd like to play him in a five-year position down the centre. We've only got one. 
and uh, we've been fairly, you know, uh, uh, unbalanced across the half-back line, and Russell has balanced it up. He's a ball player, and he gets the ball and can do something that's uh, really uh, coming back and rebound from there. Hill for North. A perfect hand pass to Plummer. He hand passes to Webb. Ducking Clayton, Webb knocks down his own erratic hand pass to Plummer. North are supporting one another. Their teamwork is going smoothly. But they're being bustled in front of goal. Von Berto fumbles. Beswick's away at full pace. He's tackled by Hurl. Light tricked by the bounce, misses the ball completely. Phillips retreats it for North. Into the attack they go. Plummer marks. And up goes the big fella, Sash. Polished football. This is where Porter missing Ray Hayes. He's on the suspended list. The odds are he'd have kept Sash busy. 16 and a half stone Sashes overcome troublesome knee injuries, yet has kicked 65 league goals up to today. That's not one of his best, but it levels the score. In goals and behinds, North and Court are identical. Howard outruns Light. Court showing signs of tiring. Could be three tough games in as many weeks as catching up with them. James pulls down a good mark from behind. It's a rugged though cleanly played game, has been from the start. This is the vital quarter, no doubt about that. Mildy fails to mark. Spry turning the attack, Paul on the flank. A subtle pass into Plummer's arms. He's got plenty of space to hurl. He's too fast for Davies. Baker and Sash. Sash takes the ball off Baker's fingertips. Fires in North's ninth goal. Compensation for the sitter he missed. Port need to call on their reserves of stamina. North's are really firing now. Spawn outleaping Gerlach from behind. The game's gradually slipping out of Port's control. Merritt misses the mark, Light is there. Tearing through, he steps inside Barry Rodland's tackle and is backed up by Woit. Passes for Nylon. Gerlach, he fails to mark from in front. The alert North's away again. Stringer, a left footer for Barry Rodland is wide, the ball going over the boundary line. North have a decided edge in pace. Porter becoming heavy legged now. Nyland with a shot on the run from an acute angle. He goes across the face of the goal. Merritt just fails to mark from in front and the ball goes out of bounds. From the throw in, Port try to use their strength, but North are matching them in this department too. Here, give it to me, says umpire Ducker. He'll ball it up. It's only a few metres out from North's goal. Marsh easing the pressure on North. Porter definitely faltering. North are confident, and there's their 11th goal. Their sixth in this quarter. Port have only kicked one goal. Merritt. A powerful kick towards the goal square. Going in fearlessly, John Cale. He's on replacing Baker. A desperate move. Might be too late for Cale to rally Port. Ball up on the fringe of the goal square. Spry punching the ball out over the boundary line. Port, a chance. Grimwood has a shot. A beauty. That's their second for the quarter compared to North's eight. The Roosters have a nice lead, a margin of 32 points. Porter very tired at three-quarter time. Will you support one another? Plus, you're a pretty quiet fella off the field, but at three-quarter time, how do you talk to your players if they're either behind or in front? Well, I think that you build up an image that what they expect from you is that, and, and what they expect from me is to ride them most of the time, and they'd be disappointed if I wasn't trying to make it, uh, give them some incentive to go on with the last quarter. <laughs> 
Sensibly at times, or as well as you can under certain circumstances, yes. I think you've got to make them fully aware of their responsibilities, the job in front of them. There is another quarter to be paid in one. Right, let's have a look at a few facts. You've run them off their legs. They are old, you haven't run them off yet. They're starting to weaken. You've got the wind at your back. What are you going to do? Come on, get out. Let a tire slide out and throw you into the wind. No! no. You're going to go now. Run, 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 run. 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 Run, run, Howard taking a well-calculated mark over Maynard. North looking dangerous. Plummer with metres to spare. A terrific pass for Sash. He's turning in a top quality performance. Cool under fire, he is literally a tower of strength. His kick is on an angle, but well within range. He should get it. Overall, he's kicked more than 100 goals during the season. Boom! North's 14th goal. If ever a side looks winners, they do. And they're making maximum use of the breeze. Beswick turns them back. Port still giving everything they have. Gerlach goes up. Cunningham is there. Strang and Stringer for North. Stringer in the clear. Passes to Rodney Robran. Beswick tackles and breaks away to give Port a chance. Gerlach and Javorski contest the mark. It's Gerlach's. He's had the edge in the air over Javorski most of the day. An accurate kicker, Gerlach should land this one. But his kicking for goal hasn't matched his general play. A bad one, a behind. Sash carving through the defence. Slick hand pass to Marsh. His left footer is marked just short of goal by Woit. He beats Von Berto. He kicks to the flank. North hold port. The Roosters are much smoother in their approach to goal. They add a point. Merritt wins the knockout from Spawn. Sorrell's away, sidestepping Barry Roblin. North soon regained control. Barry Roblin marks him in front. He's the best on ground, no dispute on that. Twice a winner of the McGeary Medal in 68 and 70, and a state representative for the past five consecutive seasons, Roblin's effort today entitles him to be acknowledged as South Australia's best footballer. Roblin's first goal of the match. The Roosters are in no danger now. Clayton and Nat, Webb and Sash. Clayton knocks the ball down. North's out running Port. Another behind. North flashing down the flank. Hurl up over the top. Misfires with his kick on the turn and Clayton's there in defence. Marsh kicks his second goal. It's all North's. John Cale's boys headed for their fifth grand final defeat since last winning the Premiership in 1965. 
And John's ambition to lead a Premiership side is foiled again. Bonberto left puts another goal. Sasha's strength clearly evident. A hand pass to Hurl. A goal, his third, and North's 90. On the final siren, a resounding victory to North Adelaide, their second premiership in succession. Full-time score, North Adelaide, 19 goals, 14 behinds, 128 points. To Port Adelaide's, 10 goals, 12 behinds, 72 points.